evening. Welcome to The Big Story. My name is Michelle Ngele Oviambo. Tonight, it is a walkathon and not a voluntary one for hundreds of thousands of commuters in Nairobi. This is after the Nairobi City County Government banned public service vehicles from entering the central business district. It has been the longest Monday for the commuters in many days, and Tuesday just could be worse. By 8 a.m. today, many business premises had very few staff as a result of the long treks many had to take this morning after they were dropped off at the various satellite bus termini around the CBD. The move by Governor Mike Mbuvi Sonko's government has been condemned by many leaders who say it was hurriedly arrived at with not a single alternative put in place especially for the elderly, the sick, and those living with disability. Interestingly, the city experienced sneaking traffic jams, even with public service vehicles locked out, and begging the question, did Mike Sonko and his team miss the point altogether? You know, people are suffering. I'm just requesting for patience from commuters. We are going to work on an amicable permanent solution to address this issue. In the morning, I just spoke to the president. We are looking for the, 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 the big buses from NYS to be transporting the physically challenged people from their stages to the CBD. From Muzuru, Mr. Chair, into the city center, it's just a walking distance, one minute uh, walk. So many, many people don't go to the gym. It's part of Come exercise. Yeah, 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 yeah. As much as it is said that it's healthy to walk, but what are the pains people undergoing? The muggings that would take place. The, 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 the people who are sick, who are supposed to, you know, have an interchange to go to uh, 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 Kenyatta. Uh, the physically challenged. What is the security position? What is when it rains? What happens? So how do you just wake up one day and say no matter will come into town? Yet it is your entity as a government that is supposed to provide an alternative means, an efficient transport. So it goes against the Bill of Rights. It, it goes against, you know, even common sense. Yeah. Well, on the short night, I shall be speaking to former Nairobi City town clerk, Philip Kisia, Matatu Welfare Association Chairman Dixon Bogwa, joining the show live from our city center studios, as well as Professor Alfred Omenya, who is an urban planning expert. He's joining us live from Mombasa. But before I engage them, let me bring in our lead reporter tonight, Brian Obuya, who is in standby for us from the Central Business District. Brian, good evening. What remains the situation at this time? Michelle, it has taken us the last one and a half hours from the I and M to Moy Avenue Primary School, where we are standing right now, courtesy of the snarl-up, the traffic jam. This is the mother of them all in a very long time. What we are seeing right now is uh, a number of. Uh, what we are seeing right now is a number of privately owned vehicles which have, uh, which basically have occupied the road. This, of course, after that directive by the Nairobi County government to ban all of the matatus from accessing the CBD. It has taken us, like I've told you, one and a half hours from the I&M building, making just a few corners within town, to Moy Avenue Primary School, where we are currently standing and talking to you from. But then, like you had asked earlier on, if actually the county government had missed the point altogether on this, it appears that most privately owned vehicles have now been brought on the road by their specific owners given uh, that they knew this would actually affect them and a number of questions have actually been uh, been asked about uh, just how viable the plan by the national by the uh, the county government of Nairobi is to ban matatus from accessing the CBD there were never questions there, there uh, as we understand right now is that uh, the questions or rather the answers have not been given to what exactly happens to people living with disabilities, what happens to pregnant women who probably may not be able to walk for very long uh, distances, what happens to the sick who are applying those particular routes and uh, uh, they are dropped off probably, let's say, in Gara. And uh, as we speak, it's important to understand that the county government has not exactly put in place uh, a very... Uh, a, a plan, a viable plan on what happens to, uh, or rather how matatus are supposed to be managed in areas uh, in, at their specific termini, let's say 
uh, at the fig tree, whereby we understand that uh, Matatu is plying the thicker road, Waiyakiwe and uh, Kiambu, there are about 3,000 of them. The space already there is occupied by a number of others, which is actually not enough for those that have been operating in those specific areas. So very little has been said by the county government of Nairobi on what is going to be the fate of over 3,000 vehicles that are supposed to be at that particular at that particular terminal at that particular terminus and that is just not exactly the question we've seen a number of uh, commuters uh, today it was a walking uh, it was a walking nation as it is right now it is at it is jam in the city and probably it will be important for me to get to understand to just talk to a number of uh, drivers here to get their feel about what they expect right now and uh, let me talk to my friend over here tafadhali kuniambia jina na uniambia unajihisi vipi kuhusiana na uh, who, uh, this very decision that has been launched by uh, the Nairobi County government to ban matters from accessing the CBD uh, thank you so much my name is Kongo Jackson eh? yeah. uh, this is total madness this is total madness we are taking about five 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 three four hours accessing from a hundred meters like now I am come here from uh, Kenyatta market I have been almost two good hours since right now where you are. I think uh, something should be done by the government, and this is totally unfair, because even the, the people who are working, they have a normal people, they don't have a way of accessing. Second, this is risking their life. From here, walking away to CBD all the way, this is total, this is, this is total unfair. Mm -hmm. Something should be done, mm -hmm. and let an action be taken. There is no even police who are controlling the car. People are just going like that on the, on the way. Mm. So something should be done. This is totally unfair. The, the county government actually argues that uh, this is supposed to reduce traffic jam, uh, traffic snarl up in the city, rather decongest the city. But what we are seeing right now is uh, a number of vehicles are, are, are all over town. Do you think, have you been using your vehicle on a daily basis or you just brought it out today because you know Matatu will not be functioning uh, today? Now your brother, kutu ya macho ya kujionea tu. Hii ni ya kujionea we mwenye unajionea venye kuko. Mm. Hii ni kama historia. Katangu hii Kenya yazie magali kueda, mm. na robi haija wai kuwa na muna hii. So venye government hii nafai fanye, wacha irudishe matatu, mm. wacha atafute binu zingine, but not this way. Hapa mm. asaidi cheke otu. Asante kongo, mesama hii ni kitu ya macho. Okay, fine. That, that Michelle was uh, one of uh, the people who have actually been caught up in uh, this traffic snarl up, saying that uh, this is total madness or so he actually argues on uh, the, the step that the county government of Nairobi has taken. I'll, I'll be trying to see if I get to speak to one more other person. Habari Ndugu? I'm very disappointed today. Mm. I, I left car at around 10, at around um, 4. And now I'm th in this town at around, this is about 8. So I've taken about 6 hours. So this was a move supposedly intended to decongest the city. And uh, what do you think? Uh, because the, count, the, uh, the, the, the governor says that we are not moving back on this particular plan. What do you think, therefore, is, uh, is going to be the situation in time? Now, the, the, the problem is that uh, there, were, there, there are supposed to be good consultations from uh, different uh, people in the government and also in the private sector. So uh, I think there were no consultations, and, uh, but, but the, the primary, the genesis of this, this is us. We, we woke up very early in the morning and uh, we said Tanotena, these are the fruits. Yeah. Thank you, Nderito. On that particular subject, uh, Michelle, whereby Nderito says that there, ma there, were no, uh, there, there were no consultations within the different stakeholders, I want you to remember uh, that uh, Nairobi Senator uh, Sakaja and some 21 other circles have had their way in court. They have gone to court and there's a hearing coming up, I believe, on, the twin on, uh, on, on Thursday, 
which is supposed to 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 get to determine on whether it's going to shelve this move by the Nairobi County government to ban matatus from accessing the CBD uh, that, that that eventually are all the consequences of which have caused this traffic snarl up in this type of uh, in, in, in uh, on this particular on this particular day so we wait for that ruling on Thursday to get to see what what actually becomes uh, what actually becomes the results of the same. It is important also to remember that some time back, uh, the senator who became governor, that is Governor Mike Sonko, at some point also went to court when uh, uh, some of the matatus were not allowed to actually access the, the, the CBD. And uh, it, it was a long turn of, it was a long turn around uh, in and out of court until those matatus were actually allowed to access the, uh, the, the, the CBD. So what remains the big question is actually whether or not this is going to be a move that will decongest the city or it's further going to send the city into, into more turmoil like we're seeing right now. Because I believe since we left our driver some few meters, uh, some few meters away from here, he actually hasn't been able to, to, to turn around and find us from where we're standing right now, even as we try to just get a look of how it feels like for Kenyans on this particular night when the country has been walking. And what we see right now, it is a country that is totally covered up in traffic. I don't know where they get to or probably get somebody else to, uh, to, to speak to. But uh, I also uh, I have been following a number of conversations on social media, uh, uh, even as uh, this traffic uh, jam continues. I've been following a number of conversations on Twitter, trying to get what Kenyans feel about this. And one of those that actually stood out is when some of these Kenyans questioned, actually, how the county government will stop. And this was actually echoed by the Matatu Owners Association. How the county government will stop a Matatu, or rather a bus, carrying 60 people from accessing the CBD and allow 60 vehicles, uh, allow 60 vehicles, each of them carrying one person to access the CBD. There have been very critical questions that have been asked about that move. And one of the answers we are receiving from the critics of that particular move is that this could actually be a way in which the county government is not that it has not thought about it as a plan, but it's also looking at the revenue part of it because you have to understand that these private vehicles which are currently covering up the CBD and all routes uh, leading to major highways causing this null up uh, are all parking in town and the county government of Nairobi is getting revenue from the same. What is the situation tomorrow? What will the situation tomorrow look like? That is what we are waiting to see, looking at all perspectives of it all, waiting for what we get to see how the court is going to rule on this specific matter come Thursday. And then from then we get to know whether this was a far-fetched plan, whether it makes sense or otherwise. Michelle. All right, uh, our lead reporter, Brian Abuya, there live from the city center studios, painting a picture there of the sneaking traffic jams within the city center, despite uh, public service vehicles being taken off the road. Let's bring in a man who perhaps has more context in, into what's happening, Gatundu South Member of Parliament, Moses Kuria, who is also the vice chair of the National Assembly Transport Committee. He's joining us by way of phone. Many thanks for your time on the big story tonight. According to a Facebook post you posted today, you seem to think the Nairobi governor, Mike Mbubi Sonko, is the greatest obstacle to streamlined public transport in Nairobi County. Yes, it is, Michelle, and uh, uh, very sorry because I was planning to be physically in studio, but uh, I'm a victim of this uh, madness that is in Nairobi right now. You know, uh, my whole point is that um, to resolve the transport issues in Nairobi requires a very comprehensive approach. And that is the approach that we, we, we formulated through NAMATA, which has been opposed very much by Governor Sonko and indeed uh, part of Nairobi leadership. And, you know, they did manage to mobilize. And uh, what we did in Parliament is that we decided to to withdraw or to pull back the, 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 the NAMATA bill when it came to Parliament because it was very clear that, uh, that uh, it would not have gone through. And um, it's very sad because... Um, if you look at a city like Nairobi, we have got um, a night population of 3 million and a day population of 7 million. So 4 million people do not belong to Nairobi County. They belong to Machakos. They belong to Kajiado, to Kiambu, and to Mulanga. 
and, and, and therefore the whole essence of NAMATA is to provide a holistic a solution that recognizes it, that there's going to be a, a day population and a night population and that transcends uh, the, the counties of Machakos, Kajiado, Nairobi, Kiabu, and Moranga. So until such a time when we can be able to operationalize NAMATA, you know, any other effort is just, you know, uh, musical chairs. The claims you make on your Facebook post are rather serious. I mean, you say that uh, the governor is uh, opposed to NAMATA. And just to bring that uh, right now, uh, NAMATA stands for the Nairobi Metropolitan Area Transport Authority. But you say that he's opposed to NAMATA because it is a ground to deny him revenue for the county. Can you substan substantiate those claims? Uh, but, you know, it is good to have uh, Nairobi County making revenue. But uh, I think of paramount importance is having a... Uh, 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 a sane transportation system, you know, the, for, for the five counties that make them metropolitan. It is, it is our stand as a committee, and I think the ministers of, of the same view, that transport within Nairobi cannot be Nairobi County issue. It's a Nairobi metropolitan issue. I mean, other than that, though, you, you, you are the vice chair of the National Assembly Transport Committee. What has the committee done in terms of legislation to aid the Nairobi City County? Uh, remember the, the bill that was there before the, the, the National Assembly emanated from uh, the executive and supported by our committee. And uh, it's unfortunate that we could not pass it at that time. But I think, uh, and tomorrow we have a meeting with the committee again, and we are going to, you know, to address the media on this issue again, that we can no longer drag our feet on passing the Namata bill. Because if we don't do that, then people will go for quick fixes, simplistic solutions, uh, which are not a solution. You know, what uh, Governor Sonko is trying to do is good from far, but far from good. You and part of the legislature seem to think that this ban came without consultation, especially from key stakeholders here. And we've had this a lot, no consultation from stakeholders. Uh, absolutely. Right. Moving forward, what does the Transport Committee seek to ensure, or how does it seek to ensure that that consultation with the right stakeholders has see, been has taken place? What you're going to do, Michelle, is that uh, uh, now once we agree with the leader of majority that we introduced the matter bill, which was, you know, facing imminent defeat, then you're going to do white consultation. Mm -hmm. Remember, even uh, the first time we called a meeting of, of, of the uh, governors, and they sent Governor Waititu because he is the chair of the infrastructure committee within the Council of Governors. Right. And apparently some of the other governors, like Sonko said, they ought to have been there. So what we're going to do is to ensure that we involve all of them and, uh, you know, we, do, we cannot interfere with how Council, uh, Council of Governors uh, conducts its business. If they decided to send Governor Aitito and Governor Soko said, no, I should have been the one, that is their business. But mm -hmm. we are going to ensure that all the respective governors from the Nairobi metropolitan area are involved, as indeed is the executive, that is the Ministry of Transport, the National Transport and Safety Authority, because this is a very serious and fundamental issue which you cannot c c come up with that kind of quick fixes as Governor Soko is trying to do. Right, I mean, the Nairobi governor has actually responded to the concerns of many Kenyans and legislators like yourself, and he says Kenyans need to get used to keeping physically fit. And he actually says that as of tomorrow, they'll start putting together, um, you know, uh, arrangements to ensure that those who are disabled, uh, the pregnant women, as, as well as those who are sick, uh, get alternative transport into the CBD. Uh, Again, in terms of having a well-thought-out solution to this problem, do you think the governor is going the right way? You know, the governor cannot start improvising now when, when the damage is done because uh, he's talking about, you know, getting fit. He, first of all, he's not the gym instructor for Nairobians. He's just a governor. Uh, uh, but second thing, if you look at people who are interconnecting, for example, somebody coming from the East France and has to connect to West France, and they have to go all the way around, you know, to get into, from, from for example, from Mudurua all the way to Fig Tree. It, it's just insane. You know, it's... It's, you know, I, I hear him on, on, on matters fitness, but I think he, he, he needs to start his own fitness program as a county. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, this is a very serious issue. You know, I think, I think he's, 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 he's playing politics and, 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 and naivety on a very fundamental issue that is of concern to Nairobians. Yes, we need to decongest the city. He has a major point there. But some of these things require some, some thought processes. All right, uh, to wake up and, and say it's about breaking a leg and omelette. You know, I think he's, he's, he's joking about very serious matters that requires matters which I think are slightly above his qualification.
All right, and many Kenyans then are looking not just to city county, but the legislature uh, for some sort of reprieve. Tomorrow remains another day for hundreds of thousands of Kenyans to tra trek long distances. Um, many businesses lost a lot of money today. Many traders incurred extra costs uh, by having to have their, uh, their goods transported at an extra cost throughout uh, the city center. So it, it is a lot of cost, really, for Kenyans in the country. What can the legislature do as soon as possible for Kenyans in Nairobi? It is indeed, and it's very sad, and, you know, we did appeal for, for the business people who had to undergo losses. More so, not just business people, but Kenyans who had, you know, to trek. And, you know, uh, you can imagine people are still stuck in traffic as we speak, so the amount of fuel that has been consumed is not, you know, through kind of oil. This is imported fuel. So the losses, even in terms of foreign exchange, is, is unbelievable. And uh, tomorrow uh, we are going to have... Uh, a meeting uh, in Parliament for the Transport Committee, meeting with C.S. James Masharia for Transport, and we're going to pronounce ourselves on this matter. All right, many thanks. That is uh, Gatundu South Member of Parliament, uh, Moses Kuria, also the Vice Chair of the National Assembly Transport Committee, joining us by way of phone. Many thanks for your time. Well, let's now bring in a former Nairobi City Town Clerk, uh, Philip Kisia. He's joining us live from our studios. Many thanks for joining us on the big story tonight. Despite public service vehicles being locked out from the city center, our lead reporter paints a picture of snaking traffic jams at the city center as late as now. Did Nairobi Governor Mike Mbubisonko and his team missed the point altogether. Um, well, um, I really would not want to be uh, personal um, on this matter. This is a, a, a very serious matter that is touching on millions of Kenyans, and particularly those who uh, live in, in Nairobi. The issue of uh, public transport is not an issue that can be left to a county. Uh, it is my opinion that uh, this is a matter that should be handled by uh, the national government. Considering the fact that uh, you need a lot of resources um, uh, you know, to develop a, a public transport and also to maintain it, it is not an area that uh, you expect to make uh, huge amounts of money. Right. And therefore, the only investor could be government the national government. Right. I mean, you serving, having served, you know, as your tenure, uh, in your tenure, rather, as a city clerk, had quite a reputation of tackling corruption and fighting cartels. You also had ambitions of being the governor of Nairobi County, and at the time you said you had solutions for the problems of strangling Nairobi at the time. What solution would you have for the quagmire we are experiencing now? Now, um, first of all, let me say that, uh, before I answer your question, that uh, Governor Sonko could be right uh, with what he intends to do, but probably the st strategy, the timing that uh, he is, he's applying could be, uh, you know, could be a little bit weak and, and uh, maybe um, not apli applicable in, 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 in our situation. Because uh, if you look at the global agenda on matters to do with the public transport, um, you know, uh, th there's a push within the global arena uh, to have sustainable development. And as far as, so far as the transport is concerned, there is a push to, um, to have people really walk and cycle. But for this to happen, you need to consider a number of factors. One, um, what about the safety of the people? Um, do we have pedestrian walkways that, uh, that meet international standards? Uh, do we have uh, a light uh, you know, during the day and night? Uh, do we have security for the people? What about the sick? What about children? What about people who uh, intend to connect? And so on and so forth. What about the people who are pregnant? So those are issues that need to be looked at uh, in a more holistic manner rather than um, I think a, a quick fix. But getting back to your question, Nairobi does not lack a plan. Actually, um, there was a plan that was done by JICA with the help of uh, the Japanese government it was done in 2005, a comprehensive study that dealt with the issue of public transport in Nairobi. Uh, the same organization, JICA, again with the help of the Japanese government, when I, I and my team were running the city between uh, 2009 and 2013, we did approach JICA who updated um, that particular um, uh, item, uh, public transport in Nairobi, and they made a raft of uh, suggestions. One. Uh, if I can remember, they did recommend that um, the current commuter rail system in Nairobi be improved in terms of um, um, you know, the infrastructure and also be expanded. 
The second thing that they did recommend was um, that we introduce um, uh, a loop line, or what people refer to as um, a li light ra uh, train system in Nairobi. Uh, these are systems that move um, thousands and millions of people in a very efficient and economic manner. The third um, intervention they did propose was having um, those two complemented by a BRT, a bus rapid transport system. So it is not that we don't have a report. Indeed, we have a report. It is sitting in government ministries. It is sitting at the county. What needs to be done is to implement that report. It is sad that um, um, from uh, 2013, when the report was actually tabled and uh, 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 adopted, it has never been implemented. Um, and, and therefore, I'm hoping that my friend Kuria, who has just been on air, will have time to look at that report. We don't need to reinvent anything, just implement the report, which was done in a very comprehensive manner, and uh, a lot of consultations were done by all stakeholders. We'll get to the BRT, but speaking of Moses Kuria, uh, do you agree with his views? Because he seems to think that the solution in Nairobi's transportational wars uh, lies in the Nairobi Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Namata, uh, which was established by President Uhuru Kenyatta in 2017. What, what is contained in this same authority that is, uh, that is likely to solve sustainably the transport wars in the country? In I the country, have right? no um, objection, and I think Namata probably is an agency that should have been you know, right now should have been operationalized. What I'm not, I'm not talking about the agency that will, will operationalize the plan. I'm talking about implementing a plan that is already in place. So whoever implements, whether it is Namata, Nairobi County, whoever, whatever you want to call it, just implement the report that was done very comprehensively by JICA. This conversation, that is a former Nairobi city town clerk, Philip Kisia. The conversation tonight is surrounding the... Uh, not very voluntary walkathon for hundreds of thousands of commuters in Nairobi's CBD. This is the big story. Just stay with us.